Have you had a patient contact you wanting hyperbaric, but they say they're claustrophobic and you're not sure how to respond to help them do the treatments that you know that they need? Would you like to know how we get patients inside our chamber so that you could help patients get inside your equipment? This is what we're gonna cover in today's video. A lot of people suffer from a degree of claustrophobia. I say a degree of claustrophobia because claustrophobia is on a continuum from very, very severe claustrophobia to mild anxiousness around closed spaces. Each patient is gonna be different on this continuum. Understanding where that patient is and helping them go through the process is ultimately what you need to do to help these people get through their fears. A lot of it's going to be with establishing trust with that patient so that they know that you understand their fears and that you're willing to work with them through that process. If you can get through that together, I promise you, most of these patients are gonna be perfectly fine and happy inside the hyperbaric chamber. It's likely that those folks that are on the very, very, very far, severely claustrophobic end of that continuum are probably not even calling your office because they know that they're just not even willing to come into the clinic. Now, we've worked with those folks too, and at the end of the video, I'll tell you how we handle that. For the rest, it's really about, again, creating rapport and building trust with patients, giving them back, in many cases, the control that they feel like they want to know that they have options and they have the ability to determine how this treatment is going to play out. It's very common for us to have a patient come through the door or even on our initial consultation, whether that's a virtual consultation or an in-person consultation, and they express some amount of concern about the chamber. I'm not sure I can do that. I'm a little bit nervous about getting inside that hyperbaric chamber. I can't go in an MRI. Is this anything like that? Those are some of the concerns that we hear pretty regularly. Let's talk about the MRI one first. This is nothing like an MRI. I always tell patients, listen, being in an MRI is like absolutely no room to wiggle and they don't want you to move because it'll interrupt the imaging that they're trying to capture. So you're stuck being still in a very, very tight space. If we're not next to a chamber, oftentimes what I'll have them do is just stand in a doorway with their back against one side of the frame of the door, looking across to the other side of the frame of the door and let them know that that's about as far away as the chamber will be from their face. In many cases, in some cases it's a little less, in some cases it's a little bit more, but there's also no barriers around them. So when they stand in the door frame, looking at the, the door frame across, it actually feels like it's very comfortable and far away. And that starts to lower the anxiety, I believe, pretty quickly. I think it's important to note that your response to their comments are really gonna drive the conversation. And this is true for you and true for your staff. So understanding this, and then again, having this conversation with your staff is really important. Imagine you have a patient that walks in and says, hey, I'd like to try hyperbaric, but I'm a little bit nervous about going inside the chamber. You know, is it tiny, is it small? How does it feel inside there? And your staff says something like, yeah, I wouldn't go in there. I'm afraid of that thing, but..." Your appointment's at 10, are you ready to go? How's that gonna fly, right? It's not gonna go over well. And so I think it's really important that everybody in the office, anybody that's patient facing, has experience with the chamber and has a level of comfort with the chamber, has done sessions in the chamber. And if they're not willing, I'm not telling you you have to fire that person, but then they should not be the patient facing person to handle hyperbaric conversations. It's important that everybody that's handling direct hyperbaric conversations has direct experience with the chamber and has a level of comfort with the equipment and the process and the experience so that they can communicate that effectively to those patients. So if a patient comes in and they express some degree of concern with regard to the space available inside the chamber and their anxiety or fear about going inside, it's important to just take that in and say, believe it or not, we hear that pretty often. And don't worry, basically almost everybody that feels that way, once they get inside the chamber, they see how much space they have, they see how comfortable it is, they see how relaxed they can be, very quickly, they're very able and willing to complete their sessions. Something very simple like that, again, is just bringing down that anxiety, bringing down that fear, helping that patient be more comfortable. You're speaking their language, you're building trust with them right away. Next, they go into the treatment room or the chamber area, and the technicians should give them a nice introduction, give them an orientation to what the chambers look like, what the experience is going to be. It's important that if the front desk hears that they're claustrophobic on some level, that your staff are able to relay that to the technician so the technician knows, okay, we can't go fast, we can't pressure or push this person faster than their comfort level. So now everybody's on the same page. Now that technician has the opportunity to show them the chamber, 
open the door or hold it open or slide out the gurney, depending on the equipment that you're using, and really take a slow orientation to what to expect and what the process of the chamber experience is going to be. Look for signs of discomfort. Use words like spacious, comfortable, or like open and climb in or slide in. Especially if you use a gurney, people tend to say the words, you're going to go on the gurney and we're going to push you into the chamber. People don't like to be pushed, especially people that are nervous. So we can't say, climb on the gurney, I'm going to push you in, but the gurney slides into the chamber. Do you understand? Words are very powerful. And when you're talking about somebody who's very nervous or anxious, each word you choose to use is critical. You're going to want to make a very detailed script for how you want this engagement to go. And you want your staff, technicians and front desk staff to practice this because this is critical. Once we give the patient the orientation on the equipment and what to expect, we also let them know, at least for our equipment, they could operate the equipment from inside the chamber the same way we can operate the equipment from outside the chamber. So there's a level of control that we're giving back to them saying, listen, if for some reason you got very nervous and you panicked, you would close this valve, open this valve, and then turn this knob. And then I say, but please don't do that. Our technicians love to take care of our patients. They want to do what's best for you. And as long as you communicate with them that you're nervous and you want to get out, they will get you out as quickly and as safely as possible. But what we've done is we said, listen, if you want to, you can. We don't say, you can't do that, right? That's taking that control away from them. If you'd like to, or if you feel the need to, you can turn this, open this, and turn this. However, our technicians are trained to help people just like you, and they love to do their job. And so as long as you're communicating with them, you just let them know that you're nervous and you want to come out, we will get you out as quickly and as safely as humanly possible. Again, these are the details of words that really need to go into the process. If your equipment doesn't allow them to actually get themselves out, you can still have a similar conversation. Virtually every chamber has an emergency evacuation button. You can say, listen, here's an emergency evacuation button. If you really absolutely needed to push it, you could push that, but please don't. Our technicians love to take care of patients just like you. And as long as you're communicating with them, let them know that you're nervous, they will get you out as quickly and as safely as possible. Once we have a conversation like that and the patient understands that they at least have some level of control and that we're willing to work with them on that level to help them feel comfortable and take them out if they feel like they need to get out, we can start the process of actually having them go inside the chamber. In many cases, the first time going into the chamber is really just a sample and a trial. It's not to do the treatment right away. It's to give them the experience of being inside the chamber. On a gurney, you might have them sit on the gurney and feel relaxed and calm. You're going to slide them into the chamber, not push them in. You're going to slide them into the chamber, but you're going to let them know, listen, what we're going to do is we're going to slide you into the chamber, you know, and then either through a porthole or through the acrylic glass, you're going to, as soon as they start going into the chamber, you're going to change your position so that you can see them through the porthole or through the acrylic and now they see you through the glass going into the chamber. And you let them know, we're going to slide you in. I'm going to wave at you, give you a good okay sign. We're going to slide you back out and just talk about how that experience went. If it's a different type of chamber, maybe they're going to climb in or maybe they're going to step into the chamber. If it's a soft chamber, they're stepping into the chamber. We hold that chamber wide open as they lay down and we keep the conversation going with that zipper or the door wide open. And we communicate that way. And while that's open, I'll then stand over the window and wave at them through the window while holding the, the chamber still open. But I draw their attention to the window at the top so that they see how it's going to look once the chamber is going to be closed. And I explain all that and let them know that that's the process. Then I come back to the zipper and I say, is that okay? They say, yes. I say, I'm just going to hold it closed, like just for a moment. And I'm going to visit you back at the window. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. So now I hold it closed. I go back to the window. I give them a wave and an okay sign. I look for that back. We come back. I open that. I say, how did that feel? If that felt fine, I say, okay, we're going to start your session then. I'm going to be closing these zippers. As soon as I close these zippers, I'll meet you by the window again. In most of those soft chambers, you have to actually close a couple of zippers. In some cases, you also have some buckles. But what we do is you know, at this point, the, uh, you know, the air would be flowing, the oxygen would be flowing. So they have some good airflow. We would close the first zipper and to them, even though you have other work to do to actually pressurize the chamber, when they see that zipper closing for the first time, they're watching their world close. So it's important that as soon as that first zipper closes, you pop your head back in that window and you make contact again, because to them, the chamber's closed, even though you know that it's not. 
but you establish that connection again in, in that window. You make sure that they're focused their attention through that window. And then you close the other zipper and or the buckles, whatever else you need to do to make that chamber start to pressurize. But that helps draw their attention away from the process. It also helps to make that connection at the window so that they know you're not leaving them alone. In other hard chambers that have portholes, similarly, they would climb in. Before you close the door and pressurize the chamber, connect with them through whatever window or porthole you'll be looking through so that they know where to bring their attention when they need you. And as soon as they feel comfortable, close those doors, start pressurizing, and immediately go to that window and make that connection. They just want to know that they're not being left alone. At that point, if it's their first session, the only other thing that we do differently is we pressurize very slowly. And the reason is in the first five or 10 minutes, if they're going to need to bail, it's going to be in that time. And so I don't want them to be overly pressurized, meaning if they need to bail from this session, it's going to take longer to get them out. So we just pressurize the first few minutes very slowly, only so if they feel that need and they get that panic and they want to get out, we can get them out quickly and safely without too much pressure, without too much pressure change in their ears, and they see how quickly we can manipulate the chamber if we need to. If they make it three to five minutes, eight minutes, like they're fine. They're likely going to stay at that point. And so we would finish the pressurization process and assume we're going to get through that session. Under all circumstances, with every session, with every patient, we should always be periodically checking on them through either a porthole window or through the acrylic glass. You're always wanting to keep an eye on patients. But this patient, especially on their first session, first two or three sessions, you really want to make that a frequent visit. Most patients really don't want to be stared at the whole time, but they also want to know that you're not leaving them alone, that they're trapped in here and no one's going to help them get out. And so a frequent visit, a friendly wave, a good okay sign, they give you that back. It's a communication strategy that allows them to know that they're not alone, that you're with them, because if they needed you, they want to know that you're close by. Now, like I said, there is that extreme case, right? This, this other person who knows they need to get in there for whatever reason, they need hyperbaric treatments. They are very, very fearful. And we can't start where we started those other patients. In those cases, we have literally gone as slow as this. We have them come in on a Monday, no appointment, just come in, come to the hyperbaric section of the office, take a look around, maybe talk to a patient, talk to a technician, look at the equipment, leave and go home. Come back on Tuesday and Wednesday come back in, say hello, maybe open the chamber, take a look inside. If they're comfortable, step inside or climb inside, but keep the doors open or the zippers open or the, the gurney out. Relax for maybe a minute or two in the chamber and then leave. Come back in another day or two, come in, open the chamber, look around, get in the chamber, maybe close the chamber or close the door of the chamber on their own volition. Allow them to do it. Open the door, don't turn anything on, let them leave. Come back again. This time we're going to close it and just pressurize it for 30 seconds. Ready? Go. You just start that process. The door is closed. The chamber is pressurizing. You depressurize the chamber. You open the door. You let them go home. Literally meeting them where they need us to meet them, allowing them to have some experiences, building trust and rapport between the technicians and the patients, knowing that everybody understands that this process is important for them and that we're hearing what they need and helping them through those step-by-step -step process of getting comfortable with the chamber. I would say in the 17 years we've been doing this, I've needed to do something like that maybe two or three times, literally. The rest of everybody else that says that they have this pretty intense claustrophobia can fit in that first conversation about an orientation, about an experience, about trying and control of the equipment and communication with the technician and building that trust. But within literally one day, maybe two days, we can get somebody into a chamber and get them to pressure very successfully. So I just wanted to share some of the strategies that we use in our office when we have patients who stress the idea that they have some claustrophobia. I hope this helps you understand some of the steps that we take. Literally, the worst thing you can do in this case is to rush somebody and take control away from them and destroy that trust. Take your time, meet them where they are, build rapport, and let them guide you on the speed that they can go. And again, within a session or two, you will have put their fears at bay and they will be happily and willingly going into the chamber, getting the treatment that they knew they needed, that you knew they needed, and now everybody's able to do it happily and successfully and safely. Thanks again for your time and attention, and we'll see you on the next video.